I have been unfortunately involved with a married man for the last six years. Michelle, six years? What are you doing with him? I know, no, I I get it. But, you know, we fall in love with the wrong people all the time, right? No, we don't, we don't, we don't. We have fantasies and mirages with the wrong people. Let's go, let's go. What's up? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show, taking your calls about marriage and relationships and dating and all sorts of insanity that's going on in our world, your mental health, your emotional health, whatever you got going on in your life. I'm going to sit with you and we're going to figure out the next right step. Give me a call at 1-844-693-3291. It's 1-844-693-3291 or go to johndeloney.com slash ask. Calls come in from all over planet Earth. Emails and notes come in from all over the planet and the team puts together. All right. We think this call is going to help the most people. And so if your call gets picked, we'd love to have you on the show. And... um Man, just the feedback we get because people are vulnerable and honest and they're finally ready to tell the truth and say, hey, here's what I'm struggling with. And we get to do it live, real time. And, um, man, people are getting helped and I'm really grateful. Please, please, please subscribe to the show. It makes such a big difference wherever you happen to be. Like it, subscribe it. It takes seven and a half seconds. Such a gift for us, man. All right, let's go out to Orlando and talk to Michelle. Ma, 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 Michelle. What's up, Michelle? Hey, Dr. John. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, I'm doing okay, but I've kind of gotten myself into a situation that I'm having trouble getting myself out of. So long story short, um, I have been unfortunately involved with um, a married man for the last six years. Michelle, and six years? Yes, it's it's long term. And he, so, <laughs> has he gotten caught yet? I, I, well, yes, that's the crux of a lot of this. Is that last year his wife discovered our affair, and um, you know, I immediately, of course, told him we need to end things. You know, we need to go on our separate ways, and he was very adamant you know, that he did not want to do that. He wanted another year so he could figure out his marriage. Oh, God. What are you doing with him, Michelle? I know. No, I, I get it. But, you know, we fall in love with the wrong people all the time, right? We no, we don't. We don't. We don't. Situation. We have fantasies and <laughs> mirages with the wrong people all the time. True. Yes. yes. And I have been very pragmatic about this whole relationship because I always knew it had an expiration <laughs> date. What are you no, talking about? You're the least pragmatic person I've ever met. Six years? I know. Yes. That's not pragmatic. That is like rolling the dice for six years. You had a good run in Vegas, man, but geez. All right. So let me, so is his wife finally saying, screw you. And he's looking at you and he's like, no, it's our time. Uh, I don't know actually what he's, what, what is going on over there. I I think (laughs) that there's a lot. Well, I mean, there's a lot of bitterness. This was, I did not break this man's marriage. First of all, just to be clear, like, their marriage was on life support long before I came into the picture. There had been infidelities on both of their sides. Michelle, 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 marriage. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Yeah. Let's just, let, let, let's not talk about them because they're not on the phone. If they want to call in, True. I'm all in. <laughs> okay. You've been Correct. with a married man. Yes. For six years. Correct. Correct. Yeah. You, you know, that's, you know, that's like wrong at every level. And yeah, I here do. we are. Okay. So how can yeah. I help? How can I help? So I have tried to extract myself from this situation and I am getting guilt tripped and manipulated into staying every time I told him that, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, he's like, I'm getting divorced. I'm going to get separated. You know, we're why, moving you, why in the this. world would you be married to him? Why would I, you consider I like, what are you, like, what are you doing? I, I, I don't, cons- I would not, I don't know if I would marry the man, but. You know, we have been at this for a long time. And, you know, when you have somebody who you have a connection with that, you know, I'm not young. I mean, I've dated. Dating is awful. But there's sometimes there's, you know, people that come into your life that even though it's the wrong situation, it's the right person. It's not. It's not. (laughs) It's not. I, 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 man, there's so much to unpack here. But here's the thing. I can, here's, here, for those of, for those people who are listening, um, 
you can go back and listen to this and I want you just to listen to Michelle. Here's what I know about you because I can tell how the way you talk and your cadence. And I know this is going to sound like I'm crazy and like I'm like reading tea leaves. You are very, very smart, right? Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. You have concocted a narrative that has made this okay for you and your body is killing you on the inside because it knows. That's correct. Yes. And you can tell yourself because, and you, man, I bet if you're not an attorney or some sort of high-level sales executive, I'd be shocked. Don't tell me. <laughs> Are you one of those two? I'm not actually, okay. but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if if your ability to craft, make something purple that is actually green, like your ability to do that is fantastic. It's phenomenal, right? It's a gift. It's a talent. And... um as Vanderkolk says, your body's keeping the score. It knows. And so this is not a, not a romantic case of wrong time, wrong. If we could just go back, it's not. You're sleeping with a married man for six years. Right. And you can say, I didn't do anything to his marriage. You did. You did. And more importantly, because they're not on the phone and they're not asking me about their marriage. You have become somebody that you don't respect or love. Or you wouldn't be calling. Correct. And so I'm yeah. more worried about you reclaiming your dignity. Who cares what this philandering, cheating loser thinks? He's run a parallel life for half a decade, if not longer. And you're assuming yeah. that you're the only one on the side. Well, you're um, assuming that you're the only one on the side. Correct. I, obviously, nobody knows really what goes on. All I, here's the one I, thing I know about him. He's a lying sack of crap. Mm -hmm. And so to think that he wouldn't do that to you is quite a stretch. Yes, I am aware of that. Like, right. I, I do understand the, the realities of, of the situation. Okay, all right. and, 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 and also it's like, yeah, but not me. <laughs> and I get that. Too. I get that, too. And that's a great self-preservation. Um, I, I, I am baffled as to why, and this is me, like, just you and I having nachos, okay, hanging out. Not judgment. I'm just being curious. I'm baffled sure. as to how you could possibly care about him. Like, I, I don't understand why, why you would feel guilty about just saying, I'm worth more than this. Um, I, I feel like a lot of it has to do with just, um, you know, just the friendship that we've built over the last few years. It's like, I probably could deal with the, the separation of the, you know, emotional and that sort of thing. But the friendship is really, I think, I get the that. hardest part for me. I get that. It's like, I mean, he's the, it's kind of like divorcing your best friend. Yeah, I get that. You know, obviously you need to do it. But um, the, the, the separation of just having someone leave my life that, you know, I've, you know, I had a relationship with, um, is, is really the hardest part for me to come to terms with. I, I got, I, I, I'm not even going to fault you on that. I think you're right. I think, I think the looming loneliness is, is terrifying. Right. Correct. Yes, absolutely. And it will, you'll, you'll feel unplugged and I cannot think of another way that you can be whole and reclaim your, your self-worth and dignity. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Like, I agree. And, you know, I know that the separation and then the, the ending of it is just going to be super traumatic, you know, but inevitable. At, at some point, it's just going to have to, like, it's going to have to end, but just... Well, and, and let's, let's, let's run the numbers. Let's run the numbers. You're, 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 yeah. you're smart. You, yeah. And I'm sure you've Googled this. Um, and <laughs> God, off the top of my head, man, I want to say 7%, but I may be off a little bit. Maybe it's as high as 15, but I think it's 7 that's the number that's coming to my mind and people can fact check me and just put it in the notes. Um, 7% of relationships that begin w as an affair, as infidelity, mm -hmm. actually go right. on to make it. Yes. It's a 93% wow. failure rate. Right. Yes. Because that's some, not surprising to me. <laughs> well, it, 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 because somebody who would violate their covenant will violate their covenant. Right. Absolutely. Somebody I mean, who will find fault. History there. repeats itself. I mean, always, always. Yeah. And so even just, even just if he was to go through and get divorced and finally be like, now we can be free to be together. You don't, 
I, I always, whenever I have, and by the way, I have this conversation a lot behind closed doors. Um, mm-hmm. I always say this in the most pushback I get on anything I tell somebody in this situation is you don't really know that guy. And it's always like, yes, we do. I've been together for six years. We've slept together. We've snuck away on vacation together. You don't know mm-hmm. that guy. The 24-7, 365, the smells behind the smells, the <laughs> all like there's a the the grumpiness, the hiding, the like, and all that becomes very real. Right. And it's hard to experience yeah. that on this side of the fantasy. Correct. And, and by the yes, way, absolutely. when you end this, like mm-hmm. so here, here's what I'm I'm saying. This ends in a tra- it's already a tragedy. It yeah. ends with body parts. People get hurt more mm-hmm. so than they already have. The only way out to preserve life at this point is to cut off everything. Everything ends with a screeching halt and you get out of the car and you walk. That's it. Yes. Yes. I agree. Like, obviously the mind, you know, is way more powerful, but, uh, you know, coming to terms with that is very difficult. And yes, I, it certainly is what needs to happen. Um, and I just feel like, I don't know if, I guess maybe part of me feels like I'm letting him down, but who and I know cares? I shouldn't care about him. I know. And, and here's the thing. I have compassion for that dude too. And I know that people are going to be like, right. what that guy? Yeah. I think he sucks. I don't think he's making terrible choices, but right. God help him, dude. What kind of world has he grown up in, lived in that this is how he's chosen to get through his life. What right. madness. Oh, Right. Oh, I feel. I do. I feel sorry for him too. I feel, Even if he that's it. I feel sorry marriage. for him. Yeah, I feel sorry for him. Yeah. But hold on, he's chosen to stay. Right. That's a choice he has made. So I don't care how awful he a, a picture he paints, and oh, she doesn't do this, and she's. I don't care. You stayed. You made a covenant on the front end, and you stayed. Right. Um, I'm more worried about you. What happened to your dignity? Like the person you looked at in the mirror and was like, this is the kind of woman I am. It's the kind of woman I'm going to be. Where did she go? Yeah, I think she just got swallowed up in a lot of this. She gets scared? Yeah, Lonely? Sadly. I mean, where, where'd she oh, go? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I think when you come out of a divorce on my end, you know, and then you meet somebody like this and you're like, oh, it'll be casual. And then it turns into a lot more. You know, and then you just hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I, can I call you out on that? Yeah. It didn't just turn into it. Like you made some choices along the way. Oh, absolutely. Like I was, I take responsibility. Okay. For the All right. Okay. Absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I'm not innocent in any of this by any means. Like okay. I don't, I certainly don't think that I was, you know, sideswiped by any of this. I mean, yes, it was a conscious choice that I made to embark on this relationship. Can so, you go back to, um, can you go back to the Michelle right before, like when he invited you, like, Hey, come over. Here's my hotel mm-hmm. or my wife's out of town. Can you go back to her right. and write her a letter? I could. Yes. And say this ends in ash, both relationally, a marriage destroyed, both in, right. um, a friendship, like a deep friendship that happens over the course of half a decade gone, just vanished like a vapor. And in who I knew, myself to be it's gone because you're gonna have to rebuild trust in you and that's gonna be hard correct way harder than finding new friends right yes there's a lot of rebuilding yeah you did things that you didn't think you were gonna do if you go back to her and say don't go don't go it's enticing you're lonely you're on the back end of of a divorce it's scary you're never gonna find love again all those stupid stories I mean, if I had to look back at this and the situation, I would never have started this to begin with. Of course, I mean, of course you would. Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Of course I mean, you would. Of course you know, you would. never would I have done this. Um, Are there kids we'll involved? Never ever do this again. Are there kids involved? <laughs> yeah, but I don't trust you yet because you don't trust you yet. Uh, I have a, a daughter who's graduated from college, but he has children that are still in the teenager, uh, oh you know, gosh. age. Have you met them? So. Oh no, no. No, no, there's been no, no, it's been very secret. This entire relationship has been, my daughter knows him, but she does not know obviously that he's married. Um, and his children are none the wiser. Like they, they, I've never met his children at all. I mean, the only people that know about this are you, me, his wife and him. 
this point. And a couple so. million listeners. <laughs> well, yeah, those, that too. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> yes. So, uh, yeah. So, no, the children involved, yes, on his end, but, uh, you know, which is why I think that, you know, obviously men have trouble moving towards divorce because they, they don't want to lose their children, they don't want to lose their money, and all of those things. He's so already, I think he, that hey, it, listen, he's right. already lost everything. Yeah. His kids, Correct. whether they know about you, they know that mm-hmm. he's never fully with them. Right. Unless he's, psych- a psych- unless he's psychotic, <laughs> he can't no. balance a full-time affair plus a full-time home, plus teenagers, plus a wife and clearly dysfunctional marriage, plus yeah. whoever else he's texting on the side or whatever their websites he's on the side. They know daddy's sitting in that couch right there, but he's not with us. Yeah. They know. Right. Yeah. I mean, kids are smart. Yeah. Real, yeah. real smart. Yes, absolutely. And so the only so. path forward I know for, I, I is... A very unceremonious, yep. like, hey, this is the last communication you're ever going to get from me. I have a friend who did this. It's, it's, it's a male friend, so it wasn't like a, uh, it wasn't like a breakup or anything like that. But he said, like, it's been a good run, and I've mm-hmm. got to make some changes in my life, and so this is the last you're ever going to hear from me. And to somebody that I was super close to, I've never talked about publicly, and hit send. And I got the note, and I wrote back, and it bounced back. And it broke wow. my heart. And... Kind of like the end of Goodwill Hunting when Ben Affleck says, I hope I just come over to your house and you're not there. Like it was that kind of well, good on wow. you, man. But the yeah. only way forward, because if you do, dude, he's good. He's kept you around for six years. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, you're never going to hear from me again. I wish you the best. This is it. Have a good one. And delete everything, block everything, everything changes. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Like, one hundred percent. You know, and then you're gonna like, have to go otherwise. see somebody and be in the wreckage of your character and integrity and dignity because it's in pieces on the floor of your house. Yes, absolutely. Yes, that's gonna be tough moving forward. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I did this to myself. <laughs> I mean, right? Hold on, oh. it's, it's not. It's not. It's not okay in any part of this. But I will tell you this. Um, I do, I do hope that, I hope that you're able to make this clean break and I hope you're willing to care about you as much as I do. Thank you. Okay. And thank you. Yeah. I'm not going to beat you up because you, you know, and I yeah. know, right. Sure. But you also know this can't keep going. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Without a doubt. So will you call me back in 30 days and let me know what it's like not being able to breathe? Yes, I will be. Hopefully, I will have a a, a, a good nope. story for you. Nope. As the no, it's going to be a terrible story. Yeah. Well, like it, there's not a happy ending here. True. There's a controlled car wreck, and there is a like a pile up on the highway with a lot of deaths in it. Yes, absolutely. But there's there's no happy ending. Right. No. And I've obviously been coming to terms with that. Like I have been like over the course of the last six months, I knew that this is, is where it's kind of heading. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just getting up enough courage, I think, to like end things for good. I've given it so, to you. You're good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. It's time. Uh, make the call today. Make the call. Just be done. Oh, John, I can't do that. You can. You can. And by the way, anybody out there who found themselves in a situation that they feel like the just the train got going too fast and it's heading down the track and you can't stop it, you can. You can. I promise you can. Is it going to be painful? Yes. Going to be hard? Yes. Is there going to be lots of rebuilding trust and rel- yes? But you can. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? So, if you're a regular listener to this show, or if you're brand new. You know that one of the things we talk about all the time is your marriage, dating relationships, trying to find that spark or trying to get that spark back, or how do you stay married and have kids or deal with money, deal with like all the stress that's going on. By the way, being married in this day and age is an act of rebellion. It's hard. You're swimming upstream. And I happen to believe it's 
worth it. And last year, for the first time, me and my good friend, Rachel Cruz, we put on a money and marriage retreat. We invited couples from all over the planet to come into Nashville, Tennessee and spend the weekend with us. And we had a prom, we had educational sessions, we had tons of Q&A, we had some back and forths, we had couples on stage for live coaching. It was amazing. I'm excited to announce today that the Money in Marriage Weekend Retreat Getaway is back. This October, join Rachel Cruz and me for a weekend in Nashville, Tennessee. At Money and Marriage Getaway, you're going to get all of it. You're going to get tools that you need to stay connected when you get back home to your madhouse lives that we've all created for ourselves, right? So I'd love to see you all face-to-face. There are a few VIP spots that they've reopened. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash getaway to get your tickets today. All right, let's go out to North Carolina and talk to Madison. Hey, Madison, what's up? Hey, Dr. John. Um, Well, I... Um, separated from my husband last week. Oh man, what happened? Um, I, it's really hard to explain because I don't really understand it. Um, we've been married a couple of years, um, but through our whole relationship over time, he just, like we started having like intimacy problems and the distance between us just grew and I couldn't, I still don't really understand why. Um, but when you say intimacy problems, like was it a sexless marriage or he was making you uncomfortable? Like what was the, give give me some of the roots of that intimacy. um, It, it, when we first got together, he was very, um, he pursued me sexually. He was the pursuer. Um, and then after three months, about three, three to maybe six months that kind of like slowed down a little bit. And I, th- I interpreted that as kind of like more performance issues or maybe low testosterone. Mm-hmm. And he was never from, he's a very quiet man. Um, so from my perspective, I felt like he, he was never seemed as motivated as I would expect to try to find a solution. It just, it just didn't fit any of the typical boxes of what I would expect. So and he, he kind of went for it the first couple of months y'all were married and then it, it didn't play out like he wanted and he just quit and you were expecting him to like, dude's going to want to fix that. And he's just like, I'm good. I'll play video games. Yes. Yes. Huh. And, and just over time, it just would be a, three months between the times we'd have sex and I would try to talk about it and we would have conversations where I would feel like we would be on the same page and then things got, it just never, I I can't even explain. It just never got better. It just kept getting worse. And so Um, did y'all ever see anybody? We did go to couples counseling um, and then he started going to counseling separately. I, I, this, I ended up, I just think there's, there's something wrong here that I don't understand that is making, what did your, what did your couples counselor say? He wasn't great. To be honest, he, he was trying to be very encouraging. Um, and John just, my husband, um, just, didn't want to deal with the problem. He didn't, I felt like I was doing all the carrying uh, and trying to solve this. And it felt like he would have a conversation with me, but wasn't motivated, I guess. Okay. Um, so then he, he saw his therapist for, um, he's, he's seen her weekly for probably about, gosh, probably like four months now. Um, but about six weeks ago, but I wasn't hearing anything about what was happening. And I was asking and I wasn't really getting anything. And about six weeks ago, I just was like, hey, I, I don't know what's happening, but I can't keep doing this. I'm exhausted. And you have to give me hope. That was the conversation I had. Is you Give me something from your therapy. Give me hope. And he... um went and saw his therapist the next week and she said he has something called um, like avoidant 
No. Dismissive, avoidant attachment. Avoidant attachment. Good God. And <laughs> all right. Oh, geez. So, I mean, so so that made I googled that, <laughs> and that made sense in a way of it. Does the the closer I felt like we got, the further away he got from me. But hold like, on a second. Hold on a second. All off. all attachment disorders, or they're not disorders. All attachment. Right. Um, Avoid attachment, anxious attachment, all those things. And I've talked to Adam Lane Smith, who's like the attachment goat, right? And I may even have him on the show one day. Like he's, he know, all they are is your body's way of responding to tough relational situations, especially when you're young. It creates a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And they are not personality disorders. They're not neurological disorders. They're just, they're, it's biochemistry. It's the way your body learns to handle a problem. And what that means is, your body can learn another way to do it, right? They're right. adaptive is the nerd word. They're adaptive, which means your body can adapt to something else. You have to want to. This isn't, it, your husband's not stamped in stone. Right. It sounds like, and this is hard to say, it sounds like he doesn't want to be married to you. Yeah. I, I, I have realized. Does he have the courage to say that? No, he sure doesn't. What a coward. Why? Why is he putting you through that? He... I almost have this cognitive dissonance of this, this version of him that I adore and I look at as someone who has things that are hard for him. We all and, do. Hold on. We all have right. things that are hard for us. Right. And then there's the version where I finally have to look at the sum of his actions. Right. Behavior is a language. Say, yeah. Yeah. I, I have, like, I have ADD. I got uh, diagnosed as an adult. I really view a lot of things as conquerable as you come up with a system yes. and good for you, you know, you, you, you can change your life. So I've <laughs> you know what that makes you to, a functioning adult. Good on you. <laughs> good on you. Good. On, I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's good for you. It, it, it's been so confusing to me to feel like in my heart, I have all this compassion for him. And in my head, I have all this frustration with him. Let me clear the confusion up, okay? And I'll, 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 I don't know if you're asking for that, so tell me to stop if you don't want me to. Um, the confusion, I think, lies here. You love this guy, and you want to be married to him, and you haven't come to terms with, you haven't chosen reality. He does not want to be married to you. And I think there's a huge, and I'm, I'm saying that that directly because I care about you. There's got to be an yeah. exhale at the end of that sentence. Oh, crap. You're right. Because you've sought professional help on multiple different, different, in different places. And the proper response to a dismissive avoidant attachment style is, well, that's not going to do in a marriage. Right. Let's go. Let's let's go figure this thing out. Awesome. There is a ton of resources out there. Not well. Sir. Sweet. Now I've got an excuse. So I don't have to be with this person. And then, by <laughs> the way, the, the way and I use the word coward intentionally. The way cowards who won't just tell the truth, and they're watching somebody that they that loves, they know loves them. Just starve to death at the end of the line. Just drown with no flotation device. The reason um, I call him cowards is because he's going to make you, you're the one that separated, and that makes him self-righteous. My wife left me. Right? He cuts off all the oxygen in the room, and then he points his finger at you because you walked out the door so you could breathe. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that I did that to you. If the 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 situation I'm in right now is that when we decided to separate, he the conversation was, I knew I could not, you know, like you said, I had to go get oxygen, and he was going to work with his therapist. And I mean, he's classic, like like he doesn't like to do hard things. He's not, you know, like I have to push him to get anything. 
And so he was going to go work with his therapist and we were going to. Why won't he work with you? Why won't he work with you? I get working with a therapist and yada, yada, yada. He's been going to therapy for two years. And I know he's not, he's not on the phone right now. So I'm, 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 I'm asking that question to the wind, right? But for everybody out here listening to this, at some point, your spouse has to look across the table and say, I need this from you. I want this from you. I want you. And you have to decide, oh, I got to go work on my there, Or, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. You see what I'm saying? There's like a tenacity. Like, I'm going to go th- from, th- to hell and back for you. I'm going to run through brick walls. And if I get to a brick wall that I can't go through, we're going to hold hands and we're going to go back and get some some skills with a therapist. And then we're both going to run through this thing again. It's not a matter of you putting things on the table and him being like, I don't know. I think I need to go to my counselor and talk about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I hate to bag That's on him I with want. him on the phone. It pisses me off that I'm, I'm, I'm mad at myself for even this, but it's so pervasive right now in this video game <laughs> culture. And I'm just hearing wife after wife after wife dying on the other end of these relationships. I'm so sorry. God almighty, I'm so sorry. I and I will tell you, Dr. John, I'm not a perfect person, but I've been a really great wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, listen, here's where, okay, and you're, uh, I'm so grateful for you because you're like, <laughs> you're, you're laying it out for me. When somebody really loves their partner, their husband, wife, fiance, girlfriend, whatever you want to say, they really love them. And that person plays cat and mouse with their heart, with their soul. What that person does, because you're a person of character, you're a person of integrity, and you're a person who said, I made a covenant to be with you for the end of time. You end up going to the mirror all day going, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And I'm telling you right now, nothing. Are you perfect? No. Do you have some crazy in you? Of course you do. We all do. Are there some things you need to work on? Of course. We all do. Me, I'm in the first, I'm the front of that line. But are you the reason this marriage is falling underwater? No. So how do I, the, the moment I'm at right now is through his own it's his own fault and I know it, you know, he has, he does not have strong friendships with the friends in his life. He's alone. Um, logically, I know that's not my responsibility. And I know that right now, so right now he's, he's trying to reconnect, you know, and I've only been out of the house a week and a half and he didn't care about that three weeks ago when he insisted on selling our house. But now he cares because he's lonely. And and logically, I know that. And the other part of me is I'm trying to decide where to, I don't know how to, where to put up my boundaries in case, because I've told him he, at this point of where I'm at, he needs to go figure out how to be a grown up man. And if he can figure out how to be a grown up man, he can come back and talk to me about and, and when he can come tell me what he did wrong, <laughs> you know? Uh, well, so the whole, the whole thing it. has been cast into a parent child relationship. Let's get out of that. Absolutely. You're not his mom. Absolutely. Okay. You're right. What, what, instead of focusing on what he needs to be out there doing, I want you to focus on here's what I'm worth. Here's what I need. And I want to give you some freedom. He has not been a person of fidelity in his marriage. Okay. Okay. He's violated his marriage covenant with you. Did he go sleep with somebody? No. Did he violate his covenant to you? Yes. And so you have said, I'm stepping out of this situation. I'm going out where I can breathe. Good for you. Very important when you take this step is... Here's a date and a time that we're going to get back together and communicate. And we're not going to communicate until then. Otherwise. How long? How long do you think that should be? 
you know, it, when it's when it's about someone's uh, being verbally abusive or they've created an unsafe environment, I think 30 days is good. I think you're at a 30-day place. Okay. And let him know. We're going to meet in this restaurant at this time, and I'll pick up the check. That's kind of a, it's kind of a, like a passive aggressive flex, but I like it. But it's letting him know I'm in charge. I'm in charge of me now. Yeah. And when you say, I need you to come back and be a grown man, I need, you need to be really clear about what that looks like. You need to have a job. You need to be contributing a full time job or, and, or you need to be back in school full time. Mm -hmm. You need to show some sort of medical or psychological intervention on your sexual dysfunction. And I'm not blaming. I'm just saying, hey, that needs to be, that needs to be priority number one. How are we coming back together here? Yeah. Because he's choosing shame and he's choosing, uh, and he's choosing to hide from a challenge. He, he acts, he, when we went to couples therapy, he, um, he thought that like, Buying me flowers more should mean that I, I there was no longer an expectation that we have sex in our marriage. Yeah, like there's not a there's a break with reality. Yes, or, or yes, there's something very wrong. I I think that what you just said is exactly right. He has not lived in reality. I would love to talk to him about how he grew up, but my guess is the whole world did everything for him. Yeah, and what he did was he married a, a, another mother. And that's not, I mean, that's the least erotic thing in the world, right? Yeah. And so I think it's you being very clear about here's the life I'm going to lead moving forward. The marriage y'all had is over. He can pursue you like the hounds of hell and chase you down and let you, let, let you experience, not through running his mouth, let you experience. I get it now. I got a long way to go, but I am going to learn how to be the man and husband that you deserve. Period. And by the way, that starts with me looking across the table and looking you dead in the eye and letting you know I want you. I desire you. And I'm going to figure this thing out. Is yeah. ED real? Of course it's real. Do people deal with that? Of course they do. But you go figure it out. You go meet with whoever you need. So what, what do I do? You if, say, I'm, gonna, I'm not responding to you anymore until this date at this time. Yeah. Well, what happens if we do that? We get there. Then you ask, how are we doing? If, he's, if, he, if, he ha, uh, if he... If he... I'm, a, I'm afraid that he'll half-ass it. I'm, I'm, I could almost guarantee you he will because he's never faced a consequence in his life. Right. And what he's choosing is I'm choosing to not work more than I'm choosing her. And that's mm. all the info you need. Yeah. And is that info going to break your heart? God, yes. Is that info going to be devastating? Yes. But that info is going to be true. And if you've ever, if you listen to the show, I want nothing more than reconciliation in every marriage possible. And I think 99% of the time it's possible. Do I want y'all to stay together and have an awesome marriage and this thing? Of course I do. But I don't want you to carry the entire wagon train through the mud, always asking yourself, why aren't you working hard enough? And this whole thing drags into the ground mm. and it collapses. Because he's going to hop off the wagon train and just go find another mother. And you're going to be stuck in the mud like millions and millions of other women. I'm just done with it. And I have some, uh, like, some sympathy. Because he's been told his whole life, let mommy clear the plate for you. Men are the problem with everything. You just sit there and I'll pat you on the head. And so I feel bad because he's been poisoned. His mind's been poisoned. As to thinking what masculinity looks like, what his responsibilities as a husband looks like, how to go get a job and get off the video games, all that crap. You know what I mean? But he's got to learn that. 
And unfortunately, some people don't learn that until they're married and there's some serious, serious consequences. Like he runs into a Madison who's an amazing woman and an amazing wife who says, I'm worth more than this. I'm not doing this. But brass tacks, I would be specific. I'm blocking your number. I'm not going to answer your text and your calls for 30 days. You've been apart for a week, so okay, for 21 more days. We're going to meet at this restaurant at this time. Here's my expectations. If you haven't met those expectations, I'm going to unblock your number an hour before. Just text me, and we're going to skip the lunch. If you don't have a job, if you're not, I mean, and by the way, I'm not talking about a career at this point. That will come, but like you got to have a job. If you're not enrolled in school or you don't have the application process cooking, if you don't have fill in the blank, a doctor, I don't want to say a doctor's note, but you are not sitting in doctor office and psychologist's office and trying to figure stuff out. Or here's the other thing. He can also be a person of character. Not, no, nope, he won't be a person of character. He'll be a person of integrity. He can look you in the eye and say, I'm not attracted to you. I don't want to be married to you. Whew. That will pull your soul out because you want this thing to work and I applaud that. But at least he would tell you the truth. And I want you to communicate in whatever way you need to. You are in control and here's what you expect. And then if he comes in, he's got a, he's got a job, he's got all the stuff, all the things that you lay out, great. Then he has earned back the right to start dating his wife again. This isn't we all move back into the same big habit. Whoa! No, now he gets to show you how he's going to pursue you. And you're not going to be spiteful. You're not his mom. You're going to continue to be an awesome wife, but he gets to pursue you. And you're going to build something new with him. And by the way, he gets to put on the table, here's what he needs. Cool. That's fine. Whew. Hmm. This is tough. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry. Let me know how that meeting goes in a few weeks. I would love to hear how it goes. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life and Own Your Past, Change Your Future. This is my gift to you. Both those books, I think, would help you in particular as you kind of walk through this fog. Don't give up. But also be super clear about what you want and what you need. We'll be right back. So we're coming to the end of 40 days of Lent, this time of reflection, fasting, contemplation, and seeking peace. Lent is about finding meaning, purpose, discipline, finding connection with God, and finally submitting to the fact that you're not the center of the universe. In the last 40 days of Lent, maybe you've made some changes in your life. Maybe you've spent some time in prayer and fasting. Maybe you finally cut out some bad habits, or you realized you are way over your head involved in some old, tough, bad habits. Through it all, I hope all of us were able to find space to slow down and reflect. I know I have. And that doesn't have to stop just because Lent is over. If you're ready to go even deeper, my friends at Hallow have created the Easter Prayer Challenge. Easter with the early church. Over the next few weeks, you can dig into the writings of the early church fathers and better understand how Christians lived and worship in those early days. And with all of the talks of AI, political elections, changing economic challenges, all of it. It might sound wild, but the words of those first Christian thinkers are still relevant in our culture today. Those timeless truths and principles can still apply in our life even centuries later and half a world away. I hope you'll join me and millions of others in these next days of prayer and meditation on Hallow. It's time to contemplate, slow down, let go, find meaning, and experience peace. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and for listeners of this show, you get three free months of Hallow, all 10,000 plus prayers, meditations, music, lecture series, and more, all of it by going to hallow.com slash Deloney. That's three free months of the app at hallow.com slash Deloney. All right, we're back. Let's go out to, <laughs> I always get this wrong, Minneapolis, Minneapolis, and talk to Valerie. Hey, Valerie, what's up? Oh, not much. How are you, Dr. John? I'm having the time of my life. How about you? I'm living the dream. Awesome. Yeah. I'm running a scam yeah. called a podcast and a YouTube show. It's so great. Yeah, I would love to run that type of scam, too. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> yep. So how can I help? I want to know how... I, I don't know what to ask for to regain, to regain 
I don't know how to ask my husband for to regain to trust him again. What happened? What broke that trust? Oh, what hasn't happened? He has never cheated on me. So I'll put that out there. But um secretly videotaping us having sex was one of the things without my knowledge. Yeah, that's a thing. That is a thing. And it was a long time ago. A long time ago. That you know of. Right. And that was a long time ago. How'd you find out? Well, he showed me. He showed me. He showed me. And and I was back when we were dating. You know, I was so blown. I mean, he showed me. And I'm like, I actually got up and went and threw up. I was so... And then you married him? Yeah, I know. Well, he said all the right things. He said, I, I don't, well, A, I said, is this what you need to do? Is this something you need to do? Because I'm not into this, you know? And he was like, no, nah, I, I was just playing. It's cool. And I've never done this before. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, what are you going to do? I, I'm, I'll go get help. I'm, blah, okay. Well, you're saying all the right things to me. All right, so I keep going. It. He uh, secretly videotaped you in a super intimate moment that you didn't know about. Okay, what else? Right. And so we got married, and over the years, he's given me, like, I have the house in my name, even though we're both kind of on the deed, if that, that makes sense. Um, he, had an, he had another home, but during that time, that was his home, and we got this one together. Um, this is both of a second marriage for us. And does he still um, have another home? No, it's sold now. Okay. Thank God. Um, it was a whole mess, but it ended up being, uh, just never, you know, like I told him when we got this, I said, I can't support this house by myself with how much it costs. No worries, I got it, I got you, don't worry. Right. Well, then every paycheck I had to ask him, I need to get money from you. And that's only recently changed in the last year and a half. When he was your husband? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I had to ask him for money to help support this house. That's only, like I said, only changed recently where now he just gives me the money, uh, you know, where I could pay bills. I oh, pay, what a sweetheart. I, I, make, I make more money than him. So what? So, Do y'all not combine your incomes together? No. Oh, geez. No. Why? Well, like I said, he had his bills. I had my bills at the beginning. Yeah, but, and but that means y'all are just running like a, y'all have a lawn business. Yeah. Y'all share a bed. Yeah. Y'all, y'all aren't married. Well, I've tried. I mean, that when we first got married, I said, here you go. You want to do all the bills? That'd be great. You know? I tried that, and all of a sudden, I was getting past due notices and everything. And I said, you know, I'm not very comfortable. I know it can be taxing trying to do two homes. Why don't I just take over this house? I just wanted things in my name to be paid, <laughs> you know. And um, he just kept the other ones then. That's how it split up, you know, at that point. Yeah. And then when he sold it, it just kind of rolled in down that way. So how can I help you now? I'm trying to understand and help know how I can get trust in him again. Like, I mean, he's done so much. I mean, that's just the iceberg, you know, the things I said, it's, it's, it, whether it's perception, deception, or an outright lie, that this is where I have problems. And I'm not, I'm not a nagger at all. Like I'll say, Hey, can you fix the faucet? And yeah. And he goes, and six, seven months later, hey, did you ever fix that faucet dumpster? Oh, no, I was waiting for you to nag me on it. And I'm like, you're an adult. I don't nag. <laughs> you said you're going to fix it. I let it go, you know. Um, I'm I have a very upset. similar conversation with my 13-year-old. Yeah, exactly. I get it. So are you his mom it. more than his wife? I don't want to be that way. I don't allow, I don't. I just walk away. I don't tolerate that. And like we have family meetings because I have three children here too. Mm -hmm. So we have family meetings and 
a recent one is I've done it when I was a single mom. I did family meetings saying, hey, guys, what's working this week? What's going on? You know, um, since my kids were little, it just helped all of us to connect five kids, you know. Will he not do them with you? No, he did. He does. And, you know, we said, okay, I'm tired of recently certain things aren't getting done. And I said, well, I'm not going to go to each person to find out who did this. I'm going to just take a picture and send it to the group text. And you all can just take care of it. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to do anything. Just take care of it. We are adults now. Take care of it, right? So recently I did that. I took a picture and I sent it. And his response to the group was, OMG. It was his thing. And I, all my kids were just like, wow, that was not cool. And he later apologized. I should have disrespected you in front of the kids. I said, actually, it's more of a bad mark on you. Not me. Yeah, here, Real, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the whole thing just felt, feels syrupy. Just like quagmire syrupy, swampy. Bleh. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like I'm going to send a text message with a picture and I'm going to do like a, like a smart A response to it. And then we're all going to go, Ooh, and oh my gosh. And uh, the whole thing just is, it, it sounds like it, it, I mean, the whole interactions, all this sounds like my middle school son with his middle school friends. And so when it comes back to like building trust, I think you mm-hmm. have to start in the mirror with you being very, very clear. Here's what I need and here's what I want in this home. Because because here's the thing. Y'all are collectively deciding what this home is going to feel like. You get to decide that. You get to choose it. And he can decide, I don't really want to be a part of it. I don't want to participate in it. I want the whole thing to burn down. Cool. Sheesh. Well, y'all got to deal with that. But the passive, yeah, you know, I'm just waiting for you to complain about it. And I'm just waiting for you to not do anything. I'll just send you a photo of it because I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even care. But you do care. It's just the whole thing. Ugh. So it's about y'all two getting away. Not with the kids. Y'all two and say, what kind of freaking marriage do we want to have? An erotic one, a fun one, a hilarious one, one with warmth, one with laughter, one with joy. What do we want? What do we want? We get to pick. We get to decide. And if we want those things, here's what I need. What do you need? Let's put all that crap on the table. All of it. Lights on. What do we need? You don't tell me the truth. You hide money. All of our money is going into a single checking account. We're going to pay bills together. Not my bills and your bills. We're going to pay bills together every Sunday night or every Saturday morning or what, every Wednesday morning. I don't care when it is. We're going to pay bills together so we both know where the money is. We're both going to look at, okay, this much went to retirement. This much is in our savings account. This much is in our emergency fund. This much is in the replace the front porch fund or whatever the thing is. But we're going to build this thing together. I'm not going to text you anymore. We're going to meet every week and I'll have a list. Hey, can you fix this? Can you fix this? Because one of the things I need is I need you to take ownership of the brokeny things in the house. I am making the majority of the money. Cool. Here's how what I need for you when when you're this since you're running the home. All all we're just gonna put all on the table. And no more of this, I don't know. I just can't. We're gonna boom, here it is. And then he may say, I'm not doing that. And that's the underlying issue in the relationship. And that's what y'all gotta work through. Or he may say, Thank God you gave me a roadmap to your heart and to this home. I'm all in. But it all starts with everybody being super, super clear. No kids at the table, just him. And if he, while y'all were dating, took a video of y'all being having sex and showed it to you and you threw up and you got sick about it and y'all talked through it and he's like, I won't do that anymore. And y'all went to met with a counselor about it and then you got married. That's over. You choosing to bring that back up this many years later is you choosing just to throw an old ingredient into the pot and then be upset about the, the taste of the stew. Y'all, y'all have, y'all went through it. You healed. We're, we're, we're moving on. I can't keep bringing this thing up because you chose to stay in the relationship under these new set of rules. Cool. Here we are. And if you feel like, well, I think he's being sketchy again, bring that up. I think he may be videotaping us again. Bring that up. 
I think there's videos. I want to see your phone. I want to see your computer, your secret files on your computer. What, bring that up. But to bring up all the stuff that y'all have worked through together, you chose to get married, you chose to heal from, just to keep bringing that back on the table, it's not helping, it's not helping create a home with peace in it. And I can imagine, I did some stupid, I never did that. I did some stupid stuff when I was dating. I said dumb things when I was 19, 20, 21 years old. God help me. When I was 23, 25, 30. And my wife and I worked through them. We healed from them. In some situations, got the help that we needed. And then we've gone this way, moved forward. And that's just part of, that's just, it's part of the healing process. So I think it just needs a good old fashioned Turn the lights off, turn the music off. Here's what we need. What's the state of things? Let's choose reality. Let's take an inventory. How are we? And we're not good. And let's start there. Thanks for the call, Valerie. Appreciate you. Wish you guys the best. Well, well, hey, when we come back, we've got a, what is it? Am I the problem? Am I? Yes, you are, Kelly. We'll be right back. Hey, good folks. I am beyond thrilled that Thorn, my favorite supplements on the planet, have partnered with me and our show listeners. I've been taking Thorn supplements for years and years, and my wife and kids take them as well. Some of my personal dailies are methylated B vitamins, super omega fish oil, theanine, glycine, vitamin D, K2, and more. I take Thorn for some specific physiologic needs for me to keep my mind and body optimized. And listen, We've set up an amazing opportunity for the folks who listen to this show. 25% off everything in the Thorn store. Go to thorn.com slash the letter U slash Deloney for 25% off. That's thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E dot com slash the letter U slash Deloney. And when you create an account through my page, you'll get 25% off all purchases. Go be well. All right, we're back. Am I the problem? Go for it, Kelly. All right, this is from Teresa. She said, I need a male's professional opinion as this is an ongoing feeling and thought I've had over the past few years. I'm a professional YouTuber, so let's just be clear about what I'm professional. She just says professional. She didn't say professional (laughs) what? That's right. I'm a professional... Something. Yip yapper. Go for it. All right. I'm a professional guitarist in Don't Button all day. Good job. Jump in. I think we're playing fast and loose with the word professional there. I think you're correct. All right. We did not get paid because we lose every year. <laughs> All right. Is it appropriate? Or let's see here. Is it appropriate for my husband's father to call me sexy? No. No. I'm assuming he thinks this is a compliment. Honestly, it makes my skin crawl and makes my stomach drop. Mine it too. It feels so cringy. Mine too. It makes me uncomfortable and it makes my blood boil. It just flat out creeps me out. It happened again this past Christmas. I almost said something, but I was reluctant. I feel like the only person that should be calling me sexy is my husband. I've literally heard it more than one time from my own father-in-law over the past years. Now when my husband uses the term, it makes my skin crawl. I want to talk to my husband about it before it happens again, but I think... And before I possibly snap at his father, but unfortunately, I think he's going to lash out at me and get defensive and say I'm thinking about it in the wrong way. There's only one way to think of, hey, you look sexy. And that is... Ew. 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 I cannot imagine my father-in-law saying that to me. Here's what happened. If my dad said that to my wife, my wife would say something along the lines of, you're disgusting. I'm leaving. Or that's gross. Don't ever say that again. What's the matter with you? And that would be a tame response that would be justified. But I think she needs to have two conversations. One with her husband. Hey, if your dad ever tells me I'm sexy again, I'm leaving the house because it makes me want to vomit. Oh, you're just, I, I don't care what rebuttal you have. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do. And the next time somebody says sexy or he father-in-law, I would look him dead in the eye and say, that's gross. The only man who should call me sexy is your son. Don't say that anymore or I'm going to leave. And he's the one making it awkward. Not you. We often think that the person who drew the boundary is like, Oh my gosh, you made it so awkward. No, I didn't. You with your huggy hands or your, I just want to feel how firm that butt is or, You're so sexy, daughter-in-law. Gross! 
gross. Am I crazy? Yes, but not about this. Ah, great answer. You no. could look, you could say, you could say, um, you could say somebody's beautiful. You could say, you look really nice. You can say, oh my, you look amazing. All of those are compliments to say, I am appreciating your beauty. Right. It's that word. You look sexy. Because it, nothing with the word sex in it nope. should happen there. Or, that makes me think of that music that we used to play before that one segment. What was that music? I have no idea. Yeah, the mustache Marlboro Man oh, music. Oh, the Camaro music. Camaro music. That's what makes me think of that. That's a great... That, that, that is a father-in-law that looks at his daughter-in-law and says, you're sexy. That's the music playing in the background. Gross on a stick with a pony and a box of farts. Yuck. Don't. No. No. Only, <laughs> only husband. Guys, here's the good news. We're going to be employed forever. We're going to be employed forever. We're always going to have a job because there's people, <laughs> father-in-laws, who tell their daughter-in-laws, hey, baby, gross. Don't be gross. Jeez. See you soon.